Hi class, for our last review lecture, let's talk about assignment. Let's say John, the creditor, loaned 5,000 to James, the debtor. In this case, assignment happens when John transfers his right as creditor to a third party, Jane in this case. In the assignment, John has become the assigner to assignee Jane who would then have the right to proceed against the debtor, James, for the 5,000. Assignment may be done gratuitously or onerously. An onerous assignment, such as when Jane buys the credit for 4,000, has the effect similar to that of a sale. As a consequence, the third party steps into the shoes of the original creditor as sobrugi of the latter. Although constituting a novation, such assignment does not extinguish the obligation under the credit assigned, even when the assignment is effected without the debtor's consent. In an assignment of credit, the debtor's consent is not essential for its perfection. His knowledge thereof, or lack of it, affects only the efficaciousness or inefficaciousness of any payment he might make. What the law requires in an assignment of credit is mere notice to the debtor, the purpose of which is only to inform the debtor that from the date of the assignment, Payment should be made to the assignee and not to the original creditor. The assigner warrants only the existence or legality of the credit, but not the solvency of the debtor. An exception to this rule is, first, if the debtor's solvency is expressly warranted, second, if insolvency is known by the assigner prior to the assignment, or third, if the insolvency prior to the assignment is a common knowledge. Now let's distinguish subrogation from assignment. In subrogation, the obligation is extinguished and it gives rise to a new one. While in assignment, the obligation is not extinguished. The same right passes from one person to another. In subrogation, nullity of an old obligation may be cured such that a new obligation will be perfectly valid. On the other hand, such nullity is not remedied by the assignment of the creditor's right to another. Lastly, conventional subrogation requires an agreement among the three parties concerned, the original creditor, the debtor, and the new creditor. On the other hand, the consent of the debtor is not necessary in order that the assignment may be fully effected. So that's it for our review lecture on assignment. Thank you for listening.